But right now, we have Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle on the line. Guys, I want you to check out ord-oracle.com. Uh, Tim is obviously a regular guest um, on Tom O'Brien's show. And let's be real, right? His, his analysis is so fascinating. Uh, he was calling uh, bullish movements in the gold months and months and months before it happened. Uh, and obviously, his analysis of the general market uh, as a whole has also been uh, so valuable. Tim, how are you doing? Good, good. Thanks for having me on again. Absolutely. We're happy to have you. So what, what are you making of what's going on right now? I'm, I'm curious to see what you got on your charts. Obviously, you know, I, I know a lot of times um, you're looking at grand pictures as well, which tend to work out so much better. Um, but this was, at least the PPI was interesting today, and I'm just curious to see what you got on the charts for us, because I got chart one up uh, right now, looking at the GDX. All right. Yeah, we, we've been looking at the big charts, like the monthly and weeklies and stuff, and I thought, you know, all that's in an uptrend, so let's kind of look at the short-term trend, uh, and that's what this is. So this is just a daily chart, kind of shows... Uh, what the short-term trend's doing. And anyhow, uh, the middle window is just the daily GDX. The bottom window is the uh, daily GDX-GLD ratio. And in a nutshell, when this ratio is above its mid-Bollinger band, you got an uptrend, which you can see there is above the mid-Bollinger band, you got an uptrend. So I like to at least use at least two indicators and not three to really help define what the trend is. So the next higher window is a GDX advanced decline. And same thing, if it's, above, it's mid Bollinger Band, it's in an uptrend. And the top window, I got the uh, GDX up down volume on the daily. The same thing here, as long as uh, that indicator is above the mid Bollinger Band, you're in an uptrend. And so we've been in an uptrend since, you know, basically March 1st. And the pattern that may be forming here on GDX, I'm not an, actually an Elliott Wave expert, but sometimes you can actually kind of tell what's going to go on. So I'm thinking we're in a five wave up from the March low. And we're probably, a lot of times, uh, leg one and leg, th uh, leg, or yeah, leg one and leg three are about equal. Then that would imply leg five could be extended. But if you look at right now, if you look at leg one and leg three, they're about equal. We're probably entering wave four right now, which is kind of a sideways pattern. It may look similar to wave two, kind of just sideways. I don't know how it's going to end up, but we may just stall here a little bit. But, you know, judging by the daily indicators on this page, there's there's no indication of even a short-term high here because all three indicators are not even near the Bollinger Band. So I'm thinking we're going to move sideways here for maybe a week or so, then head up on higher. Uh, this is all on a short-term basis, so I don't see any short-term top in GDX thus far. Uh, so um, so let's, let's go to uh, chart two yep. and actually look at look at the weekly. All right, we, so, we're about to have a chart up. Give me a second. Okay, perfect. We have okay. chart two up right now. Yep. Yeah, okay, chart two, uh, the bottom window is the uh, weekly advanced decline, and the second window up is the up-down volume weekly decline. And uh, this is, this is a, it whips around a little bit. Uh, all those dotted lines across the, the red or the white or the blue lines are when both indicators close above the mid-Bollinger Band. The red lines, dotted lines, are when they close below the mid, uh, mid Bollinger band. So you can kind of get some whipsaws back and forth as this indicator kind of whips up and whips back down. But right now it's, it's on the weekly time frame. It's probably still early in the time frame, but it gave a white, you know, way after the bottom, it just gave a buy signal here probably about, looks like about two, three weeks ago. And, uh, so on the weekly time frames, you're on a buy signal here, um, we're starting to break above some previous trend lines. I don't have it drawn on this chart, but I think there's a head and shoulders bottom that formed where the October 20, October of 2022 was ahead, and we're breaking the neckline right now. Uh, so even though there might be a mild consolidation here, it's not the final rally going up. But uh, the weeklies are on a bullish configuration here. Um, not really seeing it turning down. We're kind of hesitating here, but short term you know looks pretty good so 
uh, let's flip to chart three. All right. Okay, got the same indicators again, right. but this is on a monthly time frame. And this is the one that you want to see cross the uh, mid Bollinger Band. And it's always, these signals are always going to be late. They're probably late to the, the party, you know, maybe a month, maybe two at most. But they catch the main trend of the market. And they get on a signal, and these signals last sometimes years. They gave a sell signal back in 2012 and remained on that sell signal all the way into 2016. So that was like a four-year sell signal. And it caught the bottom and it rallied up, and it was on a buy signal, you know, almost two years. Uh, then kind of a, a sell signal and a buy signal from the, you know, it looks like about 2019, mid-2019, gave a sell signal in 2021. And actually at the moment, uh, still on a sell signal, as the um, this indicator has not closed above the mid-Bollinger Band, the bottom window uh, which is a monthly cumulative advanced decline, is right smack at the bid Bollinger Band. And uh, the top window, which is the up-down volume, is still a little short. So, and I, uh, the middle window is the monthly GDX, and I got that trend line drawn to show the head and shoulders bottom. And as we're talking right now, we're passing through that neckline right now. Uh, so it could hesitate maybe a week or so here. But normally, when you go through them, you go through them a, a length of time. Right. I hear the music. And I would, so. Yeah, I, and I have a question uh, for you when we get back uh, on Chart 3. Folks, stay right there. We'll be right back with Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle. Welcome back, folks. This is Jacob Shoot filling in for Tom O'Brien. We are with Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle. Uh, Tim, before you we went to break, we are looking at Chart 3. You were saying, right. I, I want to. I just want to make sure that I'm right on this. When it's when it's under the mid Bollinger Band, this still indicates on the. Sh this is a short term chart, but it still indicates that we're in a sell kind of position, right? On it, the it, monthly time frame. On the monthly time frame. That's what you were saying, right? How? Yeah. Exactly. How long? So go ahead. How long do these indicators need to be above the mid Bollinger Band for it to be a, a true kind of you know shift into a buy market? Well, just one month, you know, as soon as it closes okay. on the month end, since this is a monthly chart, so if the month of April closes above the mid-Bollinger band, it, to me, that's the buy signal there. Okay. And um, um, so it's not like two, three months or anything. Okay. It's as soon as it closes above the mid-Bollinger band on the monthly close, not, you know, it's, since it's a monthly, you have to wait till the month closes. Uh, but once that happens, it's on a buy signal, so... Um, but but anyhow, the, this signal on the monthly time frame doesn't whip around like the weeklies and dailies. Okay. Usually, when it gets a sell signal or a buy signal, it stays on that path for a very long, you know, for at least a year and a half, if not longer. So, if the current rally continues, you know, say in most likely it will, because I'm thinking this rally is going to last probably into September, October of this year. But I think it even just lasts into. May, both those indicators, uh, the bottom one and the top one on this chart, will close above the mid Bollinger Band. And then that opens the door. We're looking for most likely a multi year rally. Probably something similar, like a 2000 low of, of you know, when the major bear or bull market began back in 2000. So, uh, so I'm thinking some big things. Are about to happen in the gold market, especially the gold stocks, along with gold. Right. So, and if I can, so, uh, I actually have a question for you in the den. This is actually just about a, a technical thing. Um, we have one of the den members asking you what the what your Bollinger Band setting is. Is it, is it one or two standard deviations? It's, it's two standard deviations. Okay. Is whatever the yeah. It was, it's I don't make any changes on the Bollinger Bands for uh, for. These indicators. So yes, yeah, it's two standard deviations uh, for the upper and lower Bollinger Band. So awesome uh, I just take it. Yeah, I just take it right off the, the standard uh, model. Okay, so, awesome. Thank you. Yeah. All right, but we can we can move on. Absolutely, and uh, I also want to say too, we have some Den members. I, we had some silver and, and gold to go, but they're also really looking forward uh, to what you got on Spy as well. 
Spy. All right. Well, we can skip right to it, Spy, if you want to see what's going on there. Let's check it out. I'm going to pull it up right now. I think that's chart seven, right? Yeah, let's see. Perfect. Yep, I got it. It's chart seven right now. Hang, hang on here. This is a little bit tricky here. It's, um, but anyhow, I'm, I'm still, you know, I haven't, if we were down today, I most likely I would have got a signal. The reason why I'm saying that, well, let's, let's, go, let's go to the chart. The top chart is the SPY, and I got a shaded pink area across the middle there. And the only reason I shaded that pink, because that's where all the trend readings got a high level. I, I labeled them uh, back in uh or earlier mid March, I had one uh, one 1.21 trend. I had a 1.15 trend, and uh, in late March, I had a 1.65 trend. Uh, last week, we had a 1.8 trend. You notice those trend rigs all come in a kind of a congested area. So once you get start getting panic, and a trend, what I call panics, is that's when the trend reading closes above 1.2. Once that starts hot happening, an area continues to happen. If you look at the trend reading earlier today, uh, as the market was down testing yesterday's low, that trend reading was uh, up around 1.7, 1.8, up in that vicinity. And if it could have stayed down today, the market could have stayed down today, uh, I probably would have got a buy signal. But it kind of bounced up. Now we've got a trend reading of, as a, we're talking here, 0.95, not real bearish. So I'm still thinking... We're in the vicinity of a low, and I was hoping that we'd get another trend reading. You know, like, I thought we might get down to 107 on the SPYs, which is kind of bottom of the, the trading range, and and it, most likely that trend would have been pretty high there. Give me a, a confidence that the five day, at, at least a five day trend would probably get up to 1.2, probably not to 10 day, but that would be enough reason to get along around that 107 to maybe 110 area. But since the market rallied today, if you notice volume, on, at least on the SPY, is not going to be higher, most likely. Uh, the market, you know, the day is not over yet, but looking at it, we're probably not going to be have the volume we had yesterday. So we broke yesterday's high and lighter volume, so it kind of implies that we may go back down and test today's low again, if not break it a little bit. And if we do, and we get a closing rate reading around 1.2 or higher, I probably will be going long. If you look at the second window up from the bottom, uh, I do a, quite a bit of work with the uh, VIX. And also, if you do the Bollinger Bands on the VIX, it works pretty well. I got some red circles on the VIX. And uh, today, you know, we were above the upper Bollinger Band, and that was kind of a, a pretty good signal. You get a close above the mid Bollinger Band on the VIX, and you get a trend reading above 1.2 as the market is pushing down, that combination is a pretty good combination. So you got two indicators that are telling you you're probably are making a bottom. And also, if you notice, I also have a Bollinger Band on the uh, SPY, and that Bollinger Band was not too far from today's low. Uh, so we had all that combination would have led a, a decent set up for a buy signal. But since the market kind of rallied here, right. uh, I, I don't have a – if we came off the bottom with the sign of strength, which we're not having, uh, I would have maybe have tried to run after it. But since there's no volume here and the trend's not showing any great panic, I'm hoping that we get one more pullback uh, yeah, to test the lower Bollinger Band on the SPYs and touch the higher bowling bands on the VIX, and hopefully get a close around 1.2. That combination be a pretty powerful combination that you at least get a, a bounce that would last a week or two and maybe longer. Uh, but since the bounce today, maybe tomorrow we come back. I don't know. But it's kind of a sloppy market. Yeah, I've been out of the market for yeah, a couple of weeks here, and, and I get close to signals, and I don't quite get the trigger that I want to get. So. Right, it's weird, it's exactly as you're saying. We had a little bounce, not in a lot of action uh, at all. I, I hear what you're saying. Uh, Tim, we yeah. are about to go to the break. I know you have something on silver, though. Uh, I, I really do want to hear that as well, if you're willing to stay with us just for a little bit into the next segment. All right, sure will. Fantastic. Folks, we are with Tim Order, the Order Oracle right now. When we get back, we're going to look at one of his uh, silver gold charts. 
uh, really looking into that, especially for your silver bugs. Uh, folks, stay tuned. We will be right back. Welcome back, folks. Jacob Shoup filling in for Tom O'Brien. We are with Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle. Uh, we're moving back to chart four quickly because it's looking at silver, and I'm uh, curious to see what's going on with that because you've had nice a nice rally in silver as well. Well, actually, uh, yeah, the middle window is the monthly silver gold ratio, mm -hmm. and how I use this ratio is, uh, you know, the bottom window is a percent uh, Bollinger band. In other words, if it touches the lower Bollinger band, it gets below zero. That's usually a kind of an old, old oversold market. And the next higher window is a rate of change, just a normal to 12 period. And the next indicator above that is the RSI 14, just the 14. So how I use this indicator, uh, the uh, monthly gold, uh, silver gold ratio, if two of those three indicators get into the buy levels then the market's making a short-term low as far as the XAU is concerned. That's how I use it. So it's not really a it's, – it's a timing market for the XAU. And I put – you know, this chart goes way back to 1984. So the, the signals are pretty rare, but when they happen, they're accurate. And anyhow, the blue lines across the, the chart show the – the signals when they were last, you know, the last one was generated was August 2022. And that was a low, and, and actually Tom and I were talking, I think, back in maybe July or August of this year, because once these signals are generated for the XAU, I have the percentage, if you look at the uh, top window there, I have the percentage moves when the, those signals are triggered. And most of them are out 100%, give or take, you know, some are more. But at least 100%. So I was concluding the one in last year of August, you know, the October low, rather, or uh, 2022 low, had a projection up to around 180. Well, the market did start to go up, but we got in a bunch of chop most of 2023, and finally we're breaking out. But uh, anyhow, this was a long term chart. It gave kind of a long term buy signal. And so we think we're, we're probably going to go up to at least 180 at a minimum on the XAU, which, uh, you know, in my opinion, I think we're actually do more than that. I think this is setting up to be more of a, of a 2000 low type thing where the market may rally for a number of years. But anyhow, that's, uh, it's not really a predicts what silver is going to do. I, I use the silver gold ratio to predict what XAU is going to do. I see. I see. I see. So, so, but, uh, I, I'm bullish on silver, too. Matter of fact, in bull markets, silver should outperform gold, and gold stocks should outperform gold. So, in an essence, in real uh, strong bull markets, silver stocks should outperform the gold, the silver, and the gold stocks. <laughs> so, right on. So, so anyhow, that's uh, because silver should should do from from, from my, or really well here going forward silver stocks and actually silver so um i don't know we, we can go on to chart five if you want absolutely let me pull it up right now okay uh, again on chart four that gave a bicycle in august 2022 in my opinion we're still on that bicycle so if you go to chart five mm -hmm. We got another signal of our August 2022 using a different method, which is the uh, slow stochastics on the XAU gold ratio. So we got two different indicators. They're actually I got some I got another indicator too. It's not showing on on this presentation, but I got actually three different indicators on the monthly time frames that all show that August 2022 was an important low. So I think that was the bottom period. And we started an uptrend since then, even though the market really hasn't done much. Uh, it, it's, I think, momentum-wise of, of, of things to come is just starting. If you look at the bottom window, which is the monthly slow stochastics for the XEU gold ratio, you really don't get a top in the market until you get that indicator up around plus 90. And if you go look back to history, this chart goes back to... It looked like about 1986. They all it picked out those highs all pretty uh, pretty well going backwards. So, uh, how long it's going to take to get up to 
uh, that 90 period, you know, we came off the low in August 2022. We kind of bumped up, came back down. You know, there's other indicators that this rally may last into uh, uh, 2027 uh, by cycle analysis. So I think we're still early in this bull market. I think we're, I think it's got years in front of us by a few different methods. And, and so how high it's going to go, I really don't know. But probably you'll have to worry when this slow stochastic gets up to plus 90 be the time to, you know, pull your bull horns back in. And I don't know how high that will be on the XEU gold rate or the, yeah, the XEU gold ratio. Will we go back all the way up to, uh, you know, 0.375 on this chart? I don't know. Uh, but we you know if you look at the XEU gold ratio, which measures the, the valuation, I guess you might say, gold stocks to gold, gold stocks are extremely cheap compared to gold. Um, right. That ratio is in the past from 1980 to basically 1990, or, or yeah, about 1990, or actually 2000, bounced around between about 0.15 to 0.375, and then we're down in the, the 0.059 range, extremely cheap. So I don't know what what's going to go on here, but I think this is once in a decade that you get this setup. The last time we had this type of setup was in 2000. And that was a, you know, we had a lot of stocks that started off to be penny stocks that went into 10, 15, 20 dollars. So I'm, I'm thinking this may be setting up for something like that. And right now there's really nothing really, uh, according to media anyhow, that are really, you know, sentiment wise, I'll put it that way, sentiment wise, we're not showing a great deal of enthusiasm with the gold stocks. Nobody really cares. Right. And that's usually a good sign because that usually comes at the very end of the move. So I, th- I still think we're in very early stages of a uh, equity silver gold market rally. That's how I'm putting it. Yeah. So, we'd, we'd love that if that happened, huh? Well, yeah. Tim- yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah I've, uh, I've been long with this, this market for a time and, and really... It gave me quite a bit of education, what to do and what not to do. So, uh, but I've, I've been through this cycle. Of, you know, I, I've been trading the, the gold issues all the way back to 1980, or actually about 1978. I started to even trade commodities in it. And so I, I've seen the cycles as they go forward. And usually there's about a 20-year cycle. And if you look, you know, uh, the last cycle started in 2000, so now we're in 2024. Probably the bull market really started in 2022. Right. Uh, so uh, we're probably in a 20-year cycle here. So it'll be interesting yeah, going what, forward. What you said, too, you know, it, especially being, like, a younger guy and, and really, you know, I didn't start trading until I was, like, what, like 22 or something like that. It's only about five years. But, you know, listening to you and Tom, like, you guys have been through these kind of market moves before. And uh, I don't know, for, for me, I think, and I, I, for other young guys as well, this is super cool stuff. Uh, Tim, we need to get okay. to like another webinar or something going. Thank you so much for coming on yeah, the show today, do. Tim. Seriously. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Guys, that was uh, Tim Ord of the OrdOracle.com. Go give him a check out. That's Ord-Oracle.com. And we will be right back uh, for a short segment.